Okay, go ahead. What's going on, my people? Um, today we're gonna explain to you guys what had happened whenever we arrived in Senegal, because I don't think we quite explained it enough in, in the video in depth. So that's what this video here is gonna be about. Um, ignore the sugar cane, sugar cane. <laughs> but um, yeah. So you, you want to go ahead and start it off? And so what happened was before we arrived, while well, we were still in Morocco, before we arrived to Senegal, we we're communicating with the Airbnb host, and he told us about a driver. But whenever he told us the quote of the price for the driver, he had like he had one that said for just to come pick you guys up, and if you had more than four bags, an additional price as well. So we thought it was both of those prices together, which almost added up to almost like... Pretty much, like we were saying, 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Yeah. But we did not realize... At the time, I wish we would have realized or asked again, those prices were separate, not together. It was just one or the other. Mm -hmm. So so, so instead, we ended up saying, we're not going to go that route. We're just going to get to the airport, find a taxi that way, and then arrive to our, yeah. um, our the Airbnb house. The only thing is... It was an hour away from the airport, so go ahead. But even still, it doesn't matter. It was an hour away, but that's the way that we always been doing things anyway since we started started traveling. We always arrive at the airport, but we will do a little research before we go there to make sure that, you know, a what's a price. fair price for a ride, you know. Mm -hmm. So normally, actually, a lot of places we end up using Uber, which actually worked for us a lot of the times. But some places you know what didn't I mean? have it, yeah. Some places didn't. Only a few that we've been to so far didn't have it. But most of the time, we was always able to just get an Uber and get to where we need to go and keep it simple like that. But, um, so yeah, so anyway, as we were saying, we arrived in Senegal. And Uber is not available there. So that wasn't even an option for us. And it was pretty late. It was late. Really late. So, um... As we was going through the airport, you know, as you're getting ready to leave through the exit doors, they have a lot of people there. Hey, you need taxi, you need a taxi. And um, one gentleman walked up to us and he was like, hey, you need a taxi. And we was like, yeah, you know, we need a taxi. Mm -hmm. So it actually took us a while because he was to even go with him because he was trying to charge us an outrageous price. Oh, yeah. Just to give you a rough idea. He had he had given us like a sheet, like a rate sheet for the ride. Mm -hmm. Which the good thing is the other driver from beforehand also gave us a rate sheet. So his rate sheet that he gave us was outrageous because he was saying like fifty thousand mil safa, which is the Senegal money. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. And he was trying to say like fifty thousand and we were like, No, because remember the other one was like twenty five thousand mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. to thirty thousand right there. Yeah. So we were like, You're being outrageous, no bring it down yeah we had ended up going with the other person for 30 for for the 30 30k mili safa then as we he ended up kind of like walking out he walked really fast where we didn't even see where he was anymore so as he was like kind of nowhere to be seen another guy popped up in front of us and he was like oh uh you need a taxi and then that's when we're like let's just see the price he's gonna say so we go there and he's like 25 and we were like oh okay and we started talking to that person and that's how we started now he was like okay here's the car whatever the other guy had kind of walked off like dre had said to go get the car or something but we weren't sure fully you know so we kind of started getting information from this person and the car was just right there in front so they start packing up the stuff to the car then out of nowhere i think the guy realized we weren't behind him or something because he came back and he was like oh no these are my people I was talking to them first. Mm -hmm. And then um, we were like, well, we're going to go with him because he's saying a cheaper price than you were. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the second we said that, the other guy heard 30, so they also changed it to 30 as well. But Because already it was just becoming a little hectic. We just said whatever at the moment. So that's when um, all the stuff got in the car. They were going back and forth on what they are going to do. They were speaking their language, so we couldn't really understand what they were saying. And eventually we kind of we thought everything got situated yeah we thought everything was good we thought we was gonna be heading to our room yeah possibly take a little nap on the ride there because it was late and we had a long ride yeah it was around like 10 40 mm -hmm. p.m at night yeah and so they kind of left i kind of noticed our guy kind of just after they kind of left mm -hmm. the guy kind of get it off yeah he left 
Yes, yeah, so we yeah we started heading. Yeah, we off. started leaving. Yeah, yeah. then you so, go ahead because you saw it before I saw what what was really going so, on. So yeah, so we leave in the airport and we're in the car and we're heading to our destination. And I don't know, I'm a very observant person. I don't know if I just I don't know. I see in my side mirror um lights flickering, you know, from a car behind us, and I'm thinking. Maybe that they flickering they lights so we can get out the the fast lane because you know they, you know how they flick their lights over there and stuff so the cars can move mm -hmm. you know, but next thing I know the car comes around on the side of us and it comes in front of us and it and 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 it was trying to stop our vehicle yeah because it came in front and started slowing down right yeah it was slowing down in front of us trying to get us to stop but our driver instead of him just stopping immediately and pulling to the side. It, it took them a good little while before him to actually stop. Yeah, because Cause there was actually like he was trying to like get away from the guy it in was front like of a us. Chase, it was like a chase, exactly. At least you can do a demonstration. He was us. Mm -hmm. He was the other car behind. He came all the way in the front to slow down. He went right here to the side. The car went in front. Mm -hmm. He went this way. The car started going this way. So now it looked like they're trying to block us from going at all from moving. Yeah, exactly. And the, our driver looked like he was trying to kind of find a way to kind of get off. Yes, yeah, like get away. So and 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 and. and at the same time, you know, when all that was was happening, I mean, I, I, all types of stuff was going through my head because I'm like, you need to turn this car back around and go to the airport. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if you're not gonna turn it around, I'm gonna turn it around, you know. So I'm sitting up here about to grab the steering wheel. Did you grab it? I did. He grab grabbed it. the steering wheel, you and know? I saw him grab it, and I got scared because I'm like. This man's driving, and you also holding the steering wheel with him? I'm like, cause he ain't listening. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know what's going on. And we started yelling. I Y'all in the back seat, yelling. and any, anything could have happened. I don't know if they was trying to rob us. We didn't know what, what they was trying to do. That's true, because we didn't so know. So I the wanted other... the vehicle stopped. Did you know the other guy was the people from the airport? Or you I did not. Was... Oh, so you thought it was I did not. I did not. I didn't know who it was. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't know who they was until they got out the car. You know, and we were pretty much trying to yell at that man, "Stop this car! Stop this car!" Exactly. Because he was just trying to run away. So I'm thinking, whatever dispute we thought they had handled, they did yeah, not, yes, and he probably just jetted off, was trying to get the money all to himself. Yeah. We start. We had to start yelling at him to stop the car yeah. and Dre's hand in the steering wheel. It was bad. Yeah, it was bad. I mean, we was on the side of the road. I wish we would have had a little bit more footage of everything, but in the midst of everything, we were just trying to think about our safety, our child. And you know, that that was the only thing that was really on our mind. But um, yeah, so we pulled over on the side of the road, and I'm sitting up there yelling at all of them, and all of them yelling at each other. And I don't know, did you say something about the guy end up giving the other guy some money or something? Did, did you say you seen that or no? And I I don't know if I saw that part. All I know is, all I remember, at least from my encounter, mm -hmm. whenever we stopped. Dre started yelling at me and Mom B to get out the car. We got out the car. And then after we got out, he was trying to tell these people to open up the boots. Then we chase it. Oh my God. I don't know what the hell's going on. So we can get out. But in the process, everybody was just everywhere. They were arguing amongst each other. We were like, we cannot do this. We have a child. It's late at night. Like, no. Then eventually, I think, because I'm not going to lie, for me, I was really concerned. I felt like my emotions were getting the best of me. I didn't yeah. cry, but I did feel like you could yeah, hear that yeah, emotional yeah. It was, sense. It was, it was, it was a lot. That I was like going to. And I think they, that's when they started realizing, oh, they spooked us. Mm -hmm. Cause when they started realizing it was getting to that extreme for us now, where they had, they kind of stopped arguing with themselves cause they noticed we have a child and we freaking out at least, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's when they were like, no, because they refused to open the boot for Dre. Because we were like, what, like 10 minutes away from the airport? Yeah, not even that. Even not less. Even that. Maybe not five. even five. Um, it was just across the way. It was just across the way. Yeah, so it, it could have been a five minute walk. It was just right there. And they were like, I, you kept saying open the boot and I guess somebody else kept telling him no don't open the boot or something like yeah, that yeah he right? was like don't worry don't worry but I was you know I was trying to let them do what they needed to do and you know for us going about our way but I mean if I I was about to go get the keys because the keys was in the ignition mm -hmm. I could have just went and got the keys out to open the boot the first, you know but I just kind of wanted to 
Because I, I, once we got out of the car and they all started fighting with each other, mm-hmm. I noticed it was nothing. It Pretty much it was nothing to do with us. It mm-hmm. was amongst themselves. You know what I mean? Because they didn't come directly for us. You know? But it was still a scary situation whenever we was on the road. And, you know, they was um pretty much, would you call it, racing each other pretty much? But we was going pretty fast before he stopped. And I'm telling you, we was. Yeah, because he was trying know, to cut, push us off the road. Pretty much, yes. And it was, I, I guess, after they, they realized they spooked us, that's when they kind of they started speaking their language. We didn't know, but they, some, some of them, the other people kind of started leaving. And it was our driver. And I guess another guy, his boss, or the owner know. of the car. I don't, I don't know who's who, who's owner of what, none of that. All I know is that that was... That was like one of our worst travel bouts, you know. Yeah. So that day was um, that day was pretty rough. It was pretty rough, but lucky enough, you know, they ended up um settling whatever it is that they needed to settle, and we went on ahead and um went the rest of the way. Went through the rest of the way, but it. I mean, I know for me, it wasn't a comfortable ride for sure. You know, because I just couldn't get that out of my head. It was and an I really, awkward ride. It was a very awkward ride, especially when he started talking and we didn't know what he was, what language that was. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. normally when we go somewhere, we've been knowing the language and we was able to kind of translate. Translate. But we but, didn't realize it was yeah. speaking Wallah. Yeah. So, but, you know, you know, as we went on with the ride, we called. Um, Airbnb host. Yeah, and had him talk to the guy to let him know the rest of the way to the um, Airbnb and, you know, we got there safely and and then um, I believe you said the driver said something to the Airbnb host or Oh whatever. yeah, he said to the Airbnb host, he told us, like, yeah, he told us what the driver wanted to say to us, but he was like, yeah, he wanted to tell you that I want you guys to know I'm not a bad guy. Um, it was just the dispute that was going on, but I'm not a bad guy. And I mean, after the after the whole shebang happened, I mean, the guy was pretty much he didn't bother us. Well, granted, you can't really bother us as we're going if we're not communicating. But mm-hmm. uh, the rest of the ride was awkward, but it was still comfortable in a sense, you know, yeah. Yeah. considering it was such a long drive. Yeah. And we got there safely. And like I said before, I think it was maybe just a one off. Maybe it was. Maybe we shouldn't have switched taxis or whatever but at the end of the day as anybody does any kind of negotiation you go for the best price you don't mm-hmm. go where you're being ripped off yeah, you know exactly, exactly. but it was just i think it was just a one-off that just went horribly wrong thank god it didn't get really worse and whatever it is but yeah, yeah so mm-hmm. that's the more detailed explanation of what happened that day mm-hmm. of course other than the other stuff that happened earlier but that part was the worst yeah, that was pretty bad. Cause, cause, after all, I think you know what made it even worse is all the scenarios you started putting in your head. Cause yeah, you're like, it could have been a kidnapping. Exactly. It could have been a theft. Exactly. It could have been a killing. Yeah. It could have been maybe separating us. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like you would, all the worst scenarios that could have happened starts going through your head. So true. And that's what made it so scary. Cause you never know which one it could have been, and it could have been any of them. Yeah. So, but. On the lighter note, we are live. We made it mm-hmm. safe. <laughs> yep, doing just fine. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, guys, that concludes our little story. Um, as I was saying before, we wanted to give you guys an, an, you know, an, an explanation the best, best we could of what had happened that night. Because I know um, the video and, you know, probably didn't explain much. But, um, so, yeah. So that's going to be it for this video here. And uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And on that case, we'll see you back on the road.